do you think transgenderism is the epitome of white male privilege? Ooh. Or so, uh, the ultimate form of the ultimate um, form of misogyny? And the re- and no, uh, go on, go so. on. And the, and the reason why I'll, I'll, I'll preface it, yeah. So the reason why I say that is because the transgender movement, right, is pushed by mostly white men who I are now yes, saying, I'm going right. to be a woman, Yeah. Mm. right? I'm going to be a woman now, right? And so I've always used the analogy of the Captain Phillips. I don't know if anyone's seen Captain Phillips, Yes. right? <laughs> when he says, I'm the captain now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, men are saying, I'm your gender now, <laughs> yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And it's, yeah. uh, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, but the thing is, it's not a black male thing. Mm. It's a white, ma- it's, it's, for me, it's patriarchy, Mm-hmm. If you want to talk about patriarchy, mm-hmm. it's patriarchy 101. The fact that I can go into your gender, I can hijack everything, and I'm mm-hmm. now going to hijack mm-hmm. your whole gender mm-hmm. and look in your face and say, yeah. It's mine now. And what happens is it's a raising. Do you know what? Go on, go on, Charlie, go on. I'll, I'll take humbridge with the, the white privilege bit because I, yeah. I don't actually believe in white privilege. Okay. Um, really? I don't know, and I and I and I okay. I can back it up. I can back it up with, you know, my own takes on, on I okay. society. But okay, um, I forgot the point I was trying to make. Now, what did you um, say? Why, I said, uh, no, because is is transgenderism the epitome of white male privilege? Because mm-hmm. black male black men generally, Chinese men generally, Arab men generally couldn't go into a whole gender and say your gender's mine now. I mean, I see your point. I see your point because I, when um, Bruce Jenner decided to transition to become Caitlyn Jenner, mm-hmm. within nine months, woman um, of the year. you know, he was woman of the year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, how disrespectful to women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's millions, mm-hmm. millions and millions of American women that have lived a whole life as a woman. Yeah. And this person has decided for less than a year to say... Yeah. Do you know what? I fancy a go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the front of it. I could do that. That's the front of it. I could go out and put, I could grow, out, grow my hair. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, could, I could keep my beard, grow my hair, yeah. go to the surgeon, have a little, have a little fix up. Yeah. Ain't, ain't washing though. Yeah. To throw you a bone on the white privilege thing, I don't think in using the word white privilege helps the conversation. And I'll tell you why. Because once the, you insert white and privilege, you're assuming saying that every white person has this. Pri- I'm always saying, I would probably say it's majority privilege or majority advantage. It's I probably agree a better that. term yeah. than using white privilege. I think those two words s- stirs up so much negative connotation because our white brothers and sisters f- sometimes feel attacked if they say you've got white privilege. I think it's the way it's used sometimes. I get the concept that white people are the majority dem- demographic in this country. Mm. So you have a there's an advantage. Similar, if I went to China... People in China will have a Chinese privilege. Yeah, it's majority they're... demographics. Yeah, so play, I, think for sure. I think the better term is called majority privilege than saying white privilege. <laughs> You're looking like you don't agree well, over uh, there, bro. Uh, I, I just think I'm privileges are. Just... I'm just trying to try to find from from them a bond because I think sometimes using the word white privilege. Yeah. We understand what we mean, yeah. but to them they don't understand, and this right. is where we get lost right, in our right, translation. Right. You see, yeah. so if I'm saying if we want to build like cohesive conversation, mm-hmm. using a term that they don't they don't emotionally react I've, to is helpful yeah, for the I'm not emotional but I've, and I've, yeah, heard, but the, I've heard this argument before yeah, and I yeah, feel you wait. but when you look at let's say for example Barack Obama's daughters right mm. yeah and you've got like a white family yeah mm. they're crackheads mm. they've got no money their kids addicted on birth mm. who's got the privilege at birth that's Barack not, Obama's that's, kids that's not a good example of course it's a good example because because, white, white because you think white privilege is at birth right yeah white privilege is at birth mm-hmm. what, that crackhead ain't got no ain't got no privilege over Barack Obama's children but white privilege doesn't doesn't mean there's black people can't be wealthy didn't say that. No, didn't but that, say that. using that example mean is it's an it's you're, an extreme polarity. To... Yeah, I understand. I understand where you're going with that, but I'm just saying it's not a good example because he's a president and he. Well, how did he get there? With white, white privilege in America. White privilege again doesn't mean. Cool. Black, well, hold on. Uh, black, uh, uh, is it is it not a hold up? Is it not is sense? it not given as like a hold up to black people? Anyone who isn't white, the most powerful man in the world was a black mm. man for eight years running really. and given the demographics of America more white people voted yeah. for him than black yeah so where's the privilege there's, well, there's definitely white there's people. no privilege there 